I want to welcome my viewers from across the globe. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be watching from. My name is Ifi Onabo, and I want to welcome you guys to Ifi's uh, global channel. Uh, on this channel, we discuss mostly African issues, issues that relate to our lifestyle, our culture, uh, economic issues, political issues, social social issues, I would say. And then other issues that are mostly Afrocentric in nature. Uh, our vision is basically to present the other side of the African story so as to balance uh, uh, the views uh, of, of, uh, of uh, the views that people have about Africa. Today we'll be discussing something rather different. We'll be talking about the, the sanctions that most Western governments have placed on the state of Russia. And uh, this discussion, we're, we're going to be focusing on what lessons our people, uh, Africans in the diaspora, uh, what lessons this kind of uh, uh, state policy, this kind of policy on Russia, what kind of lessons we learn from things like this. And I want to, before I proceed, I want us to understand uh, that the assets of Russian billionaires are being seized. Let me say it again. The assets of private individuals are being seized from London to Rome to Madrid and practically all Western governments are involved. And one would have thought that when it's about sanctions, that only the assets of the functionaries of the Russian state would be targeted. But that is not the case. Uh, it, it, that's not the case right now. So what we are seeing here is that assets of private individuals, people who run businesses, are being stripped. These guys are being stripped of their assets. And once you are uh, suspected of being linked with the Putin's regime, then you become a target. Your assets could be seized. Now let's look at it uh, differently. All these Russian billionaires whose assets are being seized, did all of them emerge during Putin's regime? The answer is no. Some of them made their money even before the advent of Putin. The second question is this. Did all of them make their money from dirty deals. This one is open to debate. Some would say, well, they made their uh, money by stripping Russians of what, what actually belong, belongs to them. Uh, but some also made their money in other ways. They're genuine businessmen. Question three, are all of them in support of Putin? The answer is yes and no. Some of them are in support. Others are against him. The point we're trying to make here is that in, in times of war, the legal principle of inviolability of private property takes the back seat. In other words, legality is not considered here. An enemy state can appropriate your property, and there's not much you can do about that. Before I continue, I know some of you will be wondering, why is this man dressed in this way? Well, today is my birthday. And those of you who are watching, especially those who are watching for the first time, I would like to um, request you to please subscribe to this channel. And those who have subscribed already, I just want to thank you. I celebrate you. I feel honored by the subscription you have made. Right, so let's crack on. We have to understand, as African people, 
that in international relations, you do not have permanent friends, and certainly you don't have permanent, uh, you don't have permanent enemies. What you do have is permanent interests. Now that's the reason why, for example, a country like the USA has gone to Venezuela to seek for help. Who would have imagined that the USA would go to Venezuela to ask for help? Help in terms of, not in terms of cash, but help in terms of supply of oil. But today we're not discussing the merits or the demerits of sanctions. It is about what our people, what lessons our people in the diaspora can learn from these events. Now, if Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea, if he can be forced to give up the ownership of that club, what do you think would happen to an ordinary man or an ordinary woman like you in, terms, in times of conflict? What do you think would happen? Because what you see now is that the Russian billionaires have become orphans and nobody cares about them. So it is important that whilst those of us who are here in the diaspora, I'm not saying that you shouldn't invest here. But it's important for Africans and our Caribbean brothers not to forget their roots. You don't forget your homelands. My admonition is invest in places where you come from. Because there's a reason. The reason is because no hostile state can dispossess you of your belongings, of your property in your homeland. It's not possible. So our people must have a plan B. I call it plan B. Do not be deceived by the fake news that investing in your homeland is a waste of time. People will dupe you. People will squander your money. You can always invest. All you need to do is to take ownership of what you do. Our people must understand that you cannot be king in another man's land. You can only be king in your own land. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye.